Good to go, Matt. Congratulations, Player of the Month. How does it feel? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I found out yesterday, so um, you know, got to obviously let my mum and dad know, girlfriend and family, so they were obviously quite proud. Um, but yeah, no, it's not really about me at the end of the day. You know, I'm just quite grateful to play here in this team, and obviously playing in a good team naturally helps you win individual accolades. So I'm lucky enough to do that. What did your mum and dad say when you told them the news? He said, "Well done." Yeah. Um, no, they're obviously very happy. Um, and proud as as parents are, um, they've been with me like through the whole journey and process, and have sacrificed so much. So you know, the awards more for them than myself by, by all accounts. In terms of your football at the moment, do you feel that you're playing your best stuff at Celtic right now? Uh, since I've been here, probably yeah. Um, it's probably the best I've felt in, in all aspects of my game, which is positive, and I know it's a continual process of just improving over time and. I think if you kind of dedicate your attention to improving all aspects, and naturally you, you do improve over time, and I feel like I'm doing that. Since you've come in, you have been so impressive in this side. You know, won the league twice, top of the league at the moment. But it seems that this year you, you've really added goals to your game. What's changed? Has anything changed? You just feel that you're taking chances more, get into positions more. Just getting luckier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I'm in the box probably a bit more, and probably you know taking a few more pops at goal as well, and. Been encouraged to get in the box as much as possible as well, and naturally, when you're in goal-scoring positions, the higher chances are you know you're going to score more goals. So that's kind of the case at the moment. Your top scorer in the league at the moment is that something you, you can keep going, keep Kyogo behind you? I don't know, it's Kyogo in it, so he's my striker. So in a way, I'd rather he actually actually won that award, you know, because that's obviously his his job for us is to score goals, and I like seeing him do well. So you know, it's not something I think about whatsoever, if I'm being honest. Yeah. You mentioned that it's the best role you've played so far. What is it about this coach that gets that out of you? Um, yeah, it's, it's somewhat similar in terms of the previous manager, in terms of the style, maybe slightly different in certain aspects. I think I've probably got a little bit more... I'm not sure. I think I'm just in a good place myself mentally, you know, so naturally I've got the platform now to kind of just show that and I think I probably had that before, but now it's just a case of me really showing it and on a regular basis and I feel in a good place mentally to be able to do that. I think Hearts will be a quarter away through the season. How do you assess how the season's gone so far? Good, yeah. Um, started off, you know, and not rocky, but maybe a little bit. Um, just wasn't as fluid as we wanted it to be, but naturally that was always going to be the case with a new manager and lots of new players. The squad's really big, so we've got a lot of people to adapt to things and it's not easy, you know, playing at this club, so I understand if people find it <coughs> Hard to get going a little bit, um, but I think since the first few games, especially our last game, the most recent one, we look really fluid and like us. Yeah. And what kind of test are you expecting at Ten Castle? It's always difficult, you know. Atmosphere, crowd on you, feels quite tight in there just because of the way the stadium's structured. Um, and yeah, they're probably going to come after us. Obviously, we'll do the same to them. But just a case of a game where you score early, it kind of changes things quite a lot as well. Um, but, you know, if we do what we do, then we'll be okay. Did Denmark call up? That must have been another one for you. That was cool, yeah. Um, under quite, you know, random circumstances as well. I wasn't expecting it by any means. Um, was just, you know, sat on a balcony in Spain and then got a call and that was it. Um, but, yeah, obviously a proud moment for me. Um, and obviously my family too, naturally. They made the journey to the game, my mum, dad and... My girlfriend, so a good effort from them, you know, to come to San Marino, even though I didn't play, but kind of shows the support system I've got and, you know, makes it that more special when you get called up to have those kind of people around you. Are you looking into the Euros as a goal for you? Yeah, of course, I want to be there. I don't just want to be there, I want to play in it as well, if I can. Um, but that only comes if I perform well here and a lot of it's out of my hands as well, you know, it's someone else that makes decisions and I'll just do my best to be there. Is it, was it important to get that kind of taste of it to make, maybe get used to the your new yeah I think so and... nice to get you know, embedded in and everyone was genuinely really really nice even like the so-called big hitters were so friendly and welcoming right from the start so it made it very very easy to settle in and by the end I felt like I was you know a real part of the team which was nice so if I'm magnanimous but do you speak good Danish is that I might say so yeah um, yeah I'm, I'm fluent so that helps a lot when going there and like being part of the team um, 
if I couldn't do that, you know, it's probably a little bit harder to settle in and etc. But if there's like the one occasional word I don't understand, I'll just say and then I'll pick it up pretty quickly as well. It's just a case of continually speaking it and practicing just to keep myself sharp, you know. Come back to the, the kind of talk about the goals. The manager's mentioned a few times about you that he's he's kind of maybe talk to you about the timing of your runs into the box is that is it kind of that level of detail you go into with them after games and uh, yeah I, I mean I work a lot with Gavin Strachan as well um, I go through my clips with him and it's more of a case just assessing little things that we could have done better and little fine details and I think I've got enough you know game intelligence to understand and recognise when to make the run in and I think it's more of a case of just if you just keep getting in there the ball will fall to you at times as well um and it's, you know, sometimes the simple goals are probably some of the hardest ones because it probably takes a run in the 80th minute where you've been running all game and you've got to actually still make the effort to get in the box. Just little things like that when a defender might switch off as well and he's been following you around all game, which you get a lot here in Scotland, a lot of man marking. So, you know, really just persevering through that man marking and then running off somebody can be the difference between, you know, getting a tap in or not, you know. Just go back to the Hearts game, sorry, uh, sorry, just one more. Um, Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the reduced allocation for Celtic supporters. I don't know, you know, just in the hundreds. Obviously, you're used to having a big, huge away support. Does that change the dam dynamics for you? Does the is the experience that I about to help as well? Uh, yeah, it changes the dynamic for sure. Um, but yeah, like you said, the Ibrox experience, we, we kind of played in probably the most intense environment you can without fans and performed well and got a result so I don't think there's anything to, to worry about in terms of performance but personally I'd like more fans there if we could it's nicer and makes the the atmosphere better and more enjoyable but it's not something we can control so who it is. Anna, um, you started off your Celtic career with um, your game at Timecastle with a man of match performance is this something that comes into your head approaching these games you know for a mental factor a mental boost? No I wouldn't say so um, that game was a good one the first time I played in it obviously and you get good memories there, but you play so many games that you kind of just learn to let go of each performance as it's, as it's gone past. Because I think I've got to approach this game like it's the first game of the season, just and come into it fresh and open-minded, and gives me the best chance to perform well. Is um, is your mental game something that you think plays a big factor in performances, and you know, obviously more goals mm -hmm. this season? Do you think that's more yeah? Mental? I'd say so. Yeah, I think it's for me. It's the most important for myself personally anyway um, everyone's good at football you know pretty much and it's the fine margins that you know can separate players I think and if you just come from a place which is very calm and you know regardless of what's happening around you good or bad if you can stay calm throughout that then I think you naturally give yourself a better chance of succeeding because you're just coming from a place of you know best stuff up there really yeah